we're going to take a little test drive with some of the concepts that we've learned here and actually implement another little game as we go. I'm going to go through some slides here and we'll go through the concept of a battleship game. I'm sure that we've probably all played that at some time in the past. Uh, obviously the goal is to sink uh, the other players' ships in the fewest number of guesses. So when you set things up, the computer would normally, you know, place a ship on a virtual grid, and when that's done, it would ask you for your first guess, and you would provide the grid coordinates, you know, B3, and that would either be a hit or a miss. And when you actually got all of the uh, hits on the battleship, then you would win the game, and you'd get a, some feedback telling you how you did. This is the sort of game that we would actually look at completing, but that's probably a little bit more than we're going to have time to do given the graphics and all of that. So we'll try and go for something a little bit simpler to start with here. Instead of a 7x7 seven seven grid, like the one that was pictured above, we're going to start with something very simple, which is just a 1x7 grid. And for right now, we're just going to think about a single ship. And that ship will take up three grid locations, uh, similar to on the real board. Ooh, a real flowchart. Let's, let's look at this here and see what's going on. And we have at the top our circle, which indicates the start, and a circle indicates when we're finished. We have a rectangle that represents some action or processing, more action or processing. The diamond, again, is the decision point. We're gonna, things are going to flow in different directions out of there. More processing, and then finally, yeah, the game over. So let's look at this. We're going to set up the game. We're going to get a guess from the user, and then we're going to check that guess. And we want to know, is it a hit? or is it a miss? If it's a miss, we're just going to ask them to guess again. If it's a hit, then we have to mark the ship as having been hit in that grid location, and then we're going to ask for another guess. Now we also have to consider, you know, how many hits does it take until the ship is sunk. Finally, we'll display the actual score that they've got. So let's think about this. We're going to get, have to be able to get some user input, and we've shown that we can do that using the input function. So has, that's how we're going to get the guesses from the user. And we're just going to ask them, uh, since we have a 7 grid, we'll ask for numbers between 0 and 6. Now let's work our way through a little bit of actual pseudocode. Now you talked about pseudocode before. There's a tendency to blow it off and not do it, but it's really helpful to sit down and take the effort to do this. It's the English-like language, particularly the more you get uh, knowledgeable in the coding, will be very close to your code, even though it's not the exact code. So what we'll do is we'll take in the first section, we'll describe the variables that we're going to need to set up the program, and then we'll actually look at the logic of the program so we then know what the code has to do. So here we go. This is identifying the variables. First off, we're going to need three variables that are going to hold the location of each cell of the ship. And we're going to call them location 1, location 2, and location 3. Second up, we need a variable that's going to hold the user's current guess. We'll just call it guess. And initially, we'll just set it some random bogus number, 99. We're also going to need a variable to hold the number of hits. And we'll just call that hits, initialize it to zero. We'll need another variable to hold the number of guesses that it's taken so far until the battleship gets sunk. And we'll call that guesses, also initialize that to zero. And finally, we're going to need another variable to keep track of whether the ship has actually been sunk or not. So we'll call that is sunk, and we'll set it to false, because obviously, until it is, it's not. So let's now look at the game logic. We've got the variables out of the way, so we can actually kind of start putting in some pseudocode that will implement the game. We'll break this up 
into a few different pieces. We want to initially we want to look at the loop. It has to keep looping as long as the ship isn't sunk. We've got to take care of getting the guesses from the user and validating the input and then write the logic to check for a hit and see if the ship is sunk. And then finally at the end we need to let them know uh, how many guesses it took to actually sink the ship. So here's the pseudocode. Here's our loop. You know, as long as the ship is not sunk, do everything in between. First up, get the user's guess. Compare their input, you know, to, to the actual location of the ship. Um, oh, no, I'm sorry. Compare the user's input to valid values. Okay, is it, does it fit within our grid? Is it a 0 to 6? If the user's guess is invalid, give them an error message and ask them to enter a valid number. Otherwise, it's valid, and so we want to add one to the guesses. Then if the user's guess actually matches a location on the ship, we're going to add one to the number of hits. We also need to consider how many hits have been made, because if the number of hits is three, then it's time to set is sunk equal to true, and to notify the user that, hey, you sank my battleship. Then we fall out of the various ifs and else's and get down to the end, and lastly, tell the user how well they did. All right, so let's say that our virtual grid, as we go through this, is going to look like this. This is where our ship is going to be located, right here in cells 3, 4, and 5. So we represent the ship using our location variables like this. We set up location 1 to 3, 2 to 4, and location 3 to number 5. And this is what we'll use to test our input as we go through the sequence. So here's what our variables are in the beginning. The first time through we'll have the location set to 3, 4, and 5. Uh, guess won't really have anything in it, although I guess we did put some random value in there. Guesses will be at zero because none have been made. There will be no hits, and is, trunk will, is sunk will still be false. So this is the first time through. Of course, these will never change. The first guess comes in, and the guess is one. Is one a hit? No, it's not. So hits will not get incremented and is sunk will continue to be false, which will cause it to loop through one more time. All right, so here we go. Here's our three variables for the locations set up um, at 3, 4, and 5. And we could come back at another time and write code that would generate random locations for the ship to make it a lot harder for the user. Uh, here's our variable guess. You know, we're doesn't initially have a usable value, but we'll just set it to 99 for now. We'll set up hits and guesses to be zero. This is the actual code, the Python code. And then finally, we'll set up the variable is sunk equal to false. That's how we want to enter into the logic of the game. So here is our pseudocode again. And we're going to start thinking about how we're going to set up the logic in the program. Step one, we've got to set up the actual loop, get the user's input, and validate it. Step two, we need to check the guess and find out, is it a hit or is it a miss? Step three, check to see if the ship is sunk. If it had three hits, it would be sunk. And lastly, you know, provide some kind of a final message to the user. So let's start with all the code that we have so far, and, but we're just going to kind of zero in on the parts that we're adding up to it. So here's all the variables that we've declared, and we've already covered that, but we'll put them in here for completeness. Here is actually the start of the loop, right here with the while loop. And this particular conditional is what we're going to use to test whether or not we need to keep looping. As long as in sunk, is equal false, then we just keep going through the loop and getting more guesses. So here's where we get the user's guess. We set up our, we use our guess variable and we say input this text string, ready, aim, fire, 
enter a number from 0 to 6, and then we wait for the user to provide some input. And that input is, of course, a built-in function in Python. Next up, we need to check the user's guess. So, you know, if we go back and look at the pseudocode, we know that in order to do that, we first have to make sure that it's a valid input. It's important that you check for valid input. Otherwise, your code will break unexpectedly. Then we also have to determine whether it's a hit or a miss and then update the appropriate variables. So let's start by checking the validity of the input and then move on from there. So, all right, here we go. We got the guess, and this is the section here we're looking at. So if guess is less than zero or guess greater than six, if that condition is true, that means we have an invalid answer or entry. And so we're going to prompt them and tell them, hey, please enter a valid cell number. Now, I want to note here, there are obviously different ways of doing this kind of code. And I've opted to use characters here, even though you would, might normally think about using numbers, just to illustrate the fact that Python can do relational operations on strings. And if you recall, we talked about that, that it's based upon their actual ASCII decimal value. So in our case, we can still use this and it'll work. So if this turns out to be false, we drop down to the else statement and we're ready to move on. That means we have some valid input. So we're going to go ahead and increment the number of guesses so we can keep track of how many we've had. All right, let's look a little bit closer at that validity test. Yeah, I mean, you know we're checking to see if the guess is between 0 and 6, but let's drill down and just take a closer look and see how this works. It's really just two small tests put together. This is one of the tests, and here's the other test. And then we combine those two together with an OR operator. We can use the OR operator so that if either test is true, then the entire condition becomes true. And if both of them are false, then the statement is false. So we can use that to do our input validation. So we've got our guess. We've determined that it's a valid entry. So do we actually have a hit? Now this is where we have to start to write the code to determine whether uh, the, that guess matches one of the locations of the ship. Now you could do this with three distinct conditional statements. For instance, you could say, if guess equal location 1, then hits equal hits plus 1. Else if, you know, guess equals location 2, hits equal hits plus 1. Else if, guess equal location 3, hits equal hits plus 1. You could do all of that, but it's much easier to combine them all into a single conditional statement. Again, separated by the OR operator makes for a little bit tidier code and it's actually pretty easy to read that way it makes sense so assuming that this condition evaluates to true then one of the guesses was in fact a hit and we're going to say to the user hit you got a hit plus we're going to increment our hits variable so we can keep track of how many we've got all right so the next thing is how many hits does it take to sink the battleship three of them right all, once the user has gotten all of the hits, in other words, if hits is equal to 3, um, then is sunk is now changed to true. We do that. We set is sunk to true because if you look back at the while loop, what happens when is sunk becomes true? That's how we drop out of the while loop and finish up what we're doing. Now we also want to make sure that we um, let the user know that they've sunk the battleship. Last thing we're going to do, provide a little bit of post-game analysis, a little bit of feedback to the user, tell them how well they did. We can do that with a simple print statement. 
uh, based on some of the formatting we've already experienced. Uh, you took in uh, strings the actual variable guesses, and then a final string uh, guesses to sync the battleship. So that would print out telling them a nice answer to how many it took. All right, so let's just do this. We'll jump out of PowerPoint here, and here is all of that code right in the Python editor. We have our location statements up here. We're, all of our variables are getting initialized. We start the while loop. Is sunk is initialized to false here. Well, it's already false, but this is our conditional statement. This is our test. This is what we're going to test every time we go through the loop. And uh, when it's done, we'll drop out and come down here. We get our guess with the input statement. We validate the input, make sure that it's what we want. Uh, once it is, we go in and we increment guesses. We check uh, to see if we have a hit. If we do, we print hit. We increment hits variable. We test to see if, if the battleship is sunk. If it is sunk, then we change is sunk equal to true. Print some nice words to the player. Um, otherwise, it wasn't a hit, so we're just going to print miss and roll back up to the top of the while loop. So let's see how this works. We'll hit F5 to actually run it. Ready, aim, fire, enter a number. Is it number one? No, that's a miss. Is it number six? Uh, no, that's a miss too. How about number three? A hit. All right, so what? that means maybe four. Yeah, and five are hits. And bam, finally we sank the battleship. And it took five guesses to sink the battleship. So that gives you an example of uh, a short bit of code that kind of refreshes a lot of the concepts that we've gone over in terms of some different variables, string variables, integer variables, the uh, Boolean uh, variables that sign true or false. We're doing input statements, getting in text in from a user. Uh, we're doing if-then statements, evaluating conditionals. We're using the whole while loop to loop back and forth through it. So this is a good opportunity to see how all of this comes together in a very short, concise program uh, that actually turns out to be quite functional. And with that, we'll conclude this screencast.